So Calder. Alexander Calder invented this art form. Um, probably in 28, 29, maybe 1930. It's a little unclear about that. And when he started it, uh, he had joint problems also of what you do. Because when you join materials, you normally join them at right angles. If you want a progression, if you want the thing to walk up, you have to use a different joint. And he learned that, uh, and frankly, I learned it from him. Uh, I'm a believer if you have a wagon, you don't need to invent the wheel. Somebody else did that. Um, I like progressions, small to big. Uh, I, because I'm an architect, I like hard edge shapes. Most of his pieces were what I call ink drops, freeform, funny shapes. Um, but I don't, that's not, I made one that way. And frankly, I didn't like it. I like, I like the hard edge things. Um, he kind of stopped making mobiles in the late 60s and transitioned to um, what I will call stabios. These assemblages, some of them quite large, like 50 feet high, that you will find on plazas in front of public buildings. This was an experiment for a competition out in Loudoun County, which I might point out I didn't win, but that's all right. I've seen a number of statues kind of like those. In fact, um, South Lakes High School put in some a few couple decades back yeah. that were out front. Do you know by any chance you know the artist is who did the one at no, South I Lakes do High not. School? No, not Calder's. Because okay. Calder always signed his stuff with an A, and the C went through the A. Okay. Alexander Calder. Um, I signed mine WS. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, but I haven't, I haven't done anything big like that. It, that's pretty expensive to do as a free form. I mean, if you're just going to do it without a commission. And I don't have a place to store it anyway. It doesn't make any difference. Um, uh, could, you, could you tell me a little bit about the, um, the, the one in the East Wing that you were just telling okay, me about a moment East ago? Wing piece. He was awarded the commission in about, I think, 73 or 74. The building wasn't finished then uh, because that's a piece that was purchased by the friends of the National Gallery of Art. Um, he then did the sketches. I have never read whether he made a model. He usually made models of his big pieces. I've never read that he made a model of that. But somehow, some way, there was something that people worked from because he died in December of 76, and then Modrian's son, who is an engineer, I guess, finished the engineering of it, and that's when they discovered it was gonna be so heavy that they couldn't hang it. Um, you could have designed the skylights for that kind of load, but the building was done. My God, it was dedicated. People were walking around. And I don't think the Mellon family was really keen on spending another million and a half dollars on fixing a skylight. Yeah, I think you mentioned it. What do you say? The, um, the original, uh, original mobile in the East Wing? The was, was almost 10,000 pounds because yeah. it was all steel. So it was re-engineered in aluminum, um, honeycomb aluminum for all the shapes, which is quite light. We use it today on buildings for skins, for panels. But at any rate... Um, it turned out to weigh a little less than a thousand pounds, 990 something, um, and was installed in uh, 78. But like I say, he never lived to see that installed, but it's the last one, to my knowledge, that he did. Uh, these, he did have some stabios at his two studios, because he had a studio in France and he had a studio in Connecticut. I have no idea whether he has a gallery that represents him with that stuff. Because those are the kind of things that architects would commission for buildings. But I have no idea whether it's been done or where they are. And I assume some gallery up in New York probably still has some mobiles that he made. Um, but I don't know that for a fact. I've not done any research. don't really care one way or the other. But he was a uh, remarkable man because he invented this art form. He made it. And most of his work was done in steel because when he started, steel was the only material available. Uh, by the mid 30s, aluminum was made, but you couldn't get a hold of it because it was all being used for aircraft. And then during the war, of course, you couldn't 
you couldn't find a stick of aluminum. A uh, story about he had a, a little John boat that he used to fish from, and he cut up the boat to make mobiles because that was aluminum. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, and I don't know what he made his stuff of after the Second World War. Yeah. The literature is silent on it, yeah. whether it was steel or aluminum. Can I ask one more question, sure. sir? Um, um, so you mentioned um, the width of the, the span, the beam, or the longest piece on the mobile in the East Wing in Washington, D.C., in the gallery. What did you say that length well, the was? Well, whole, the whole piece from end to end is 72 feet. So I would assume one of those pieces must be about 18 feet. You could use a high-strength aluminum to span 18 feet if there's a light weight at the end of it. It wouldn't yeah. sag. Because yeah. one of the problems with regular aluminum, and aluminum like all metals, depending on how you treat it, it's structural properties are different. You can make very high strength aluminum, which is used in aircraft uh, until carbon fiber came along, but it's treated differently also with alloy, slightly differently. Um, where you would like, rather than having a rod that's an inch and a quarter in diameter, you might want something that's only three quarters of an inch. Well, you use a different kind of metal. If it's painted, nobody can tell the difference anyway. It's, you know, it's got some ID numbers stamped on it, but yeah, nobody yeah. looks at that. And I do the same with mine. If I get into a situation where I've got a fairly decent weight, I can't use an aluminum rod for the top rod. That's a brass brazing rod. Even because on just small pieces, yes, really? Yeah, because if I used aluminum on it, the thing would eventually go like this. My hands would be down at my side. It'll just sag. Because the okay. aluminum that I use is a very low, strength aluminum. It's meant for, it's a welding rod. You're not using it structurally like I am. You're making a puddle out of it to weld two pieces of metal together. But anyway. Well, um, I really want to thank you for your time today oh, here at um, Lake Ann in Reston, Virginia. <laughs> and uh, You're welcome. You want to tell the folks who you are real quick and how to get in touch with you? Uh, my name is Wayne Schiffelbein. I'm here at the gallery most days, uh, always on a Saturday morning. Uh, um, and uh, my handle is Wayne Schiffelbein at yahoo.com. You just have to spell Schiffelbein right, all 12 letters. Um, and you can, I think there's a the name on the back of one of those postcards, is a bigger print. You know, I do that. But I, I, I'm not on any web pages or anything like that. Don't, don't, don't care to. Thank you. All right, if you want to talk to Wayne, Check out some of his really cool art and see some other, other, other wonderful, wonderful art here in Reston, Virginia. Bring yourself down here, Lake Ann Plaza. Some people call it Washington Square Plaza. And if you really want to have a lot of fun, you can go swimming in the lake, although it's a little cold today. Or you can come for the polar bear dive and they jump in the water in a couple months from now. And jump out too. <laughs> <laughs>
Let it hit on. 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 Let